Hi everyone, I'm Shaylin here with Reedsy, and today we're going to be talking about antagonists. Antagonists and antagonistic forces are the backbone of a story's conflict, and the story's conflict is kind of the backbone of the story. So you need some kind of antagonism in your story in order to make it a story. So in this video we're going to break down villains versus forces of antagonism, the different types of antagonistic forces, and then some qualities that make a compelling villain. So let's start with the different types of antagonism. All stories will have forces of antagonism, not all stories will have a villain. So an antagonist or an antagonistic force is anything or anyone preventing the character from achieving their goal. A villain, on the other hand, is a usually human, but at least sentient, being who has dark motives and is set out to take down or destroy the protagonist and probably much more beyond them. Like an antagonist, there's something that stands between the protagonist and their goal, but a villain is just a very specific type of antagonist. We see villains more in big scale speculative or genre or kind of just like action driven plots. Sci-fi, fantasy, superhero movies always have a villain. We don't tend to see villains as much in say a contemporary novel. Those novels might thrive more on antagonistic forces. So not all forces of antagonism are villains, but all villains are forces of antagonism. So let's start by talking about forces of antagonism. Like I said before, it's anything that's preventing the main character from achieving their goal, and there are three different kinds. Societal, interpersonal, and internal. And ideally, your story would have all three of them. So societal antagonists are the large-scale antagonists. This could be the environment, such as in a man versus nature kind of conflict, or anything that has to do with the larger community, even just kind of um, a town or a city that has an antagonistic attitude towards the main character. It's not one specific person, it's the society. This also includes any kind of just societal force that your character encounters, including their circumstances. So discrimination, ostracization, poverty, these things are all societal antagonists. Next up are the interpersonal antagonists. So this is where you have a conflict between the character and another character or another set of characters. Villains are a part of this. Interpersonal conflicts are often the backbone of the story because the backbone of the story is often grounded in interpersonal relationships and the tensions and conflicts there. So this is where you see a character who is in conflict with a character who has opposing goals or who is somehow preventing the main character from achieving their goal. And then finally we have the internal conflict. This is the conflict that the character has within themselves. For any kind of character-driven story, it's really important, but it usually can't function on its own. The internal conflict usually needs some external conflict to pair with it in order to actually reveal it. This internal conflict is what's going to lead to your character's arc. It's kind of what allows them to have an arc and it's what makes them interesting, but it probably can't support a story fully on its own, at least not in a novel. So in order to have lots of tension and lots of conflict in your story, aim to have all three types of antagonistic force in your story, but one or two might be more of the focus. You know, the societal antagonism might be more in the background, um, but it should still be there because it can apply a lot of pressure. So now let's take a look at the interpersonal conflict and examine the villain a little more. Now, some of this can just apply to an antagonistic character who's not necessarily a villain, but these are things that are specific important if you're writing an actual villain character. So what qualities make a good villain? Number one, intelligence and competence. The intelligence and the competence of the villain should either match or exceed the protagonist. This is so that when the villain is defeated in the end, it's because of the protagonist's insight or the protagonist's competence or the protagonist's problem solving, not due to the antagonist's stupidity or the antagonist slipping up that's not a very satisfying resolution. You want the protagonist to win because the protagonist was especially good at what they were doing, not because the antagonist was especially bad at what they were doing. Really, you only see incompetent villains in humorous kind of stories. It wouldn't be a very satisfying ending if the protagonist just won because the antagonist made a dumb mistake. That's not really an ending that the main character earns. So in order to make the battle not only fair but very hard to win for the main character, the antagonist's skills should exceed theirs. This is going to force your protagonist to be especially innovative in order to come out on top in the end. Number two, goal and motive. What they want and why they want it. It's kind of the basis for any character and it's especially important in a villain. Goal is just as important for the villain as it is for the main character, if not more important. A villain's goal is going to conflict with the protagonists or going to conflict with the general good of society. Without a goal, a villain isn't really a villain because they don't want anything and so there's nothing to really take down. What does this villain want? 
and why do they want it? Motive is, as always, extremely important in conjunction with goal. If the villain is evil or in the realm of evil, or at least planning some very dark things, there needs to be a reason why they want this. If they believe what they're doing is right, why do they believe that? If they know it's wrong but they want to benefit themselves, how is it benefiting them? Evil just for the sake of evil isn't very interesting. We want to know the reasons behind the evil. We want to know why, even if it's very diluted, the villain is doing the evil thing that they're doing. You know when you see those kind of classic cartoon villains where the villain is just kind of like, I am the most evil and I am so evil, you know, twirls moustache. It's not a very interesting villain because we don't know what they want. They're just evil to be evil. That's not very complex. It's also not very original. Next up is backstory. Like all characters, backstory can be so important to fleshing out your character, what they want, why they want it. It's really important for constructing that motive. Backstory is enriching to help understand a character and it doesn't have to be too prescriptive. So it doesn't have to be this happened, therefore I'm evil because of this. But it can give us that kind of rounded, more nuanced view of the character and what might have led them to the point that they are right now. Or even if there's not a ton of correlation, maybe this character is just kind of a sociopath. I don't know, maybe they're just really evil. We can see what has led up to this moment of extreme action, what they've done in the past, see kind of that origin story. And finally is make them rounded. Just like with your protagonist, a villain should have both strengths and flaws. Balance out your antagonist with some positive qualities so that they don't become a flat character. A villain is probably going to be a rather extreme character, but round them out with kind of just like a bit of softness, a bit of a good quality or something, just in order to make them more complex. It can be really interesting when villains you know, express genuine concern or care for some people selectively, or they have kind of maybe good motives for bad actions, or they have bad motives for good actions, and there's just more complexity there, and they fall into that area of gray morality rather than being just straight up evil to be evil, to do evil things. And in the end, that little bit of softness or goodness can make their evil qualities much more interesting. It's more interesting to read about a villain who maybe has capacity for good, but chooses to ignore it than one who's just completely, fully evil and that's all there is to them. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you learned a little bit about villains today and remember to subscribe for new writing, editing, and publishing videos every Tuesday and Friday. Until next time.